Okay, well now we're going to take a look at the, we're going to estimate the volume of Mount Fuji. We're going to take two approaches. Um, we're going to use a best fit function for the shape and form of Mount Fuji, or a function which describes the variation in the radii of Mount Fuji at different elevations. And then we'll also do that from a discrete using a discrete approach and uh, we'll also include a comparison to the um, a volume with a similar height and base obtained for a comb. Uh, is it a good back of the envelope approximation? That's a good question because we're always kind of searching for if we want to get a quick estimate, um, you know, is this, is this a good, is this going to give us a reasonable result or kind of a ballpark result? Uh, the profile that we're looking at extends off to the southwest of the summit caldera. And if you're at all familiar with the area, you know that there are trails that come up from the south, uh, roughly the south. Those are the Fujinomiya and the Gotemba trails. And then off here to the northeast, we have the Subashiri and the Yoshida trails. Now, you know, as an exercise following this, you might want to go into Google Earth and see which would be the easiest to go up. To, to Are the, um, the slopes steeper here or here? Or, uh, <clears throat> this area down here is associated with the 1707 eruption, the uh, Hawaii. It's a little uh, caldera sitting down here. We have uh, a kind of a lava plume that uh, extends uh, um, out uh, from the base with tephron, volcanic ash, and so on. So this would have been one of the more recent uh, volcanic eruptions, uh, producing kind of a side blast here. So this is the profile digitized. So we're coming down from the top, near the top of Mount Fuji, down to about 0.25 kilometers. And it looks something like this. We can see some irregularities in here. And we're just going to be integrating circular slices, infin infinitesimally thin. And our integral looks like this, so we need some expression for some functional representation of R squared in terms of the elevations. And uh, <clears throat> so in this plot, we've plotted the radius squared versus elevation, and we've derived this function here to represent r squared as a, as a function of h. That gives us uh, 809.14 over 1 plus h to the 3.942 power. So we're going to be integrating this function. So we would take that representation for r squared, plug it into this integral. We get this integral here, and this is an integral that you should be able to evaluate. You might take a moment and see what you uh, see what you come up with. It's a definite integral from 0 0.209 to 3.73 kilometers. Um, the coefficient of determination was about 0.991 here. So pre pretty good correlation. Again, off. Uh, underestimating in some places, overestimating in others, and that's going to affect, that's going to produce some inaccuracy in our volume estimate. So, so if you went through the process on your own, uh, on a scratch uh, sheet of scratch paper, you should have got something that looks like this. Uh, for the definite integration, we have minus pi times 275.03 over 1 plus h to the 2.942 power. So, you know, this is 1 plus h to the minus 3.942 power. We know that in integration, uh, the power is increased by 1, and then we divide by the new power. So we get 2.942, and then we divided 809.14 by... Uh, 2.942 to get um, 275.03, and then we're evaluating over these limits. So, so we have this um, 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 
representation here, and I've just carried through the multiplication by pi. So you should get something that looks like this. We get minus 864 over 96.7 plus 864 over 1.748, and that gives us a volume of about 485.36 cubic kilometers. Now we can also take the discrete sum approach. So using the, you know, this function that we derived and doing a, a, a definite integration, we got 485 cubic kilometers. By the way, that's a lot less than the 1,450 kilometers, uh, 1,390 kilometers, the variety of estimates that we see that we've seen using a, a cone in the past. So we're just taking a discrete sum approach here. These are our volume elements, delta V sub i. We have pi r sub i squared, delta z. And over here, we're just writing that in terms of the elevation, delta h. So have our data over here. We go through the discrete sum approach for each of these little volume elements. And here our delta H is variable, and in some cases because of the irregularity of the uh, <clears throat> uh, curve, some of the delta H's are actually negative. So, uh, but we get a volume of about 508 cubic kilometers. So, so, so again, we came up with a functional representation of R squared of H. And uh, as noted, it underestimates R squared in some areas and overestimates in others. Um, the discrete sum contends with some of these irregular uh, topographic features. And, but, but I would say, in general, both estimates are kind of hovering in the vicinity of about 500 uh, uh, cubic kilometers, a cubic kilometer volume for uh, Mount Fuji out to uh, an elevation in the surrounding plain of about um, 209 meters. So, as we mentioned, you know, we're kind of tying back into the last video. We estimated volumes that varied between four, uh, 1416 and 1324. So, the volumes of from using, you know, if you were to use this as an approximation, the volume that you would come up with would be about 2.75 times that using the best fit function and discrete uh, summation approaches. So not really a very good uh, back of the envelope estimate for the volume of Mount Fuji. And why is that? Well, uh, if we think about r squared, you know, if we just compared the shape of the cone to the shape of the volcano, you'd say, well, they're, they're, yeah, obviously the cone is going to overestimate the volume, but uh, maybe not by 2.75 times. But here, when we look at r squared for the cone compared to r squared for Mount Fuji, we can see that that separation between these two curves is, is rather extensive and uh, leads to a significant difference in in volume. So so if you were thinking, well, you know, I can get a quick uh, estimate just using the cone, well, maybe not. You'd be off by nearly a factor of three. So that pretty much covers um, all this idea of volumes of rev revolution and uh, also, different approaches for estimating the volumes of um, volcanoes, stratovolcanoes in this case, and kind of a comparison here between that for a cone and that obtained from an actual uh, uh, two estimates, uh, two separate uh, distinct types of estimates for the volume of Mount Fuji. So, uh, tune in next time. See you then.